do is basically subliminal binary coding. I make flowers according to shapes in the crowds around me. I know what men like, I know what women like. What men like, basically, I'll make this real quick. What we call art is actually hunting and mating wrapped up into a bow. Without the species procreating, there is no species. Without the species eating, there is no species. So those are the two primal things. And then because of those two things, I know I can narrow everything down to zeros and ones. Feminine, masculine, positive, negative, however you want to look at it. Okay. Most small mammals, including dolphins and bats, are hardwired to like things round third of the way down. It's attraction reproduction, what keeps the system going. Then after that, it's the hunting and gathering part. Most male mammals, including dolphins and bats, they were hunting. So they're in the woods looking for symmetrical things. Two eyes, two ears, going get it out of the bush, kill it, bring it home from the family. Because of that, most male mammals are pre-wired to like things based on round third of the way down because that's what their hunting skills are. Okay, that's the hunter. Now the gatherer with females, they're looking for something asymmetrical, point it going straight up. So now we got our ones and we got our O's. This is where the subliminal binary coding comes in. I can take those zeros and ones and manipulate them to dictate who's going to go after that flower. Because the next step, or let's say the next process of evolution would be the Fibonacci sequence of zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight. By taking those numbers and manipulating them into the weaving part of the flower, as far as here's your one, here's your two, here's your three parts, your three lines, your five, your eight, your thirteen. Here's an easier way to look at it. Here's your blank, your one, one and two is three, three and two is five. If I get more elaborate, I'll drop the eight, the thirteen, the twenty-one, the thirty-four. That's more for the elaborate occasion. Now here's a simple one here. Here's a line, which is your one, and then you get your three parts, and then your 13. So this is a one, three, 13. I can say it's a one, two, because of two parts, but let's not get too technical. Okay, now, by adding that subliminal binary coding part of the zero ones, and at the same time, making sure that I got everything structured with being based on circles or ones or lines, you might say, I can literally dictate by gender to a 70% accuracy which way, which gender is going to go which way. Most females go from going straight up. Most men go from things round, third of the way down. It's like a morning glory, something I don't have on the table. But these two flowers here are basically my, my money makers when it comes to making sure females are attracted to a flower with a number. And you make everything with. They're all made out of a 100% napkin. This particular napkin is a Torque Premium MB570, 9.125 by 9.5, most durable multi-fold hand towel on the market today. And do you supply your own? Or do you find, do you feel like you need to kind of like get them somewhere and like that's part of it? Or, or do you no, just have a whole bunch of them at home? No, they sell them right behind the counter to me for 10 cents per napkin. It's a long story. But yeah, it's only $3 for a pack of 150. But due to the fact that my overhead is so little, <laughs> it's a symbiotic relationship, I'll call it. But yeah, I, I like the situation. I'll take that 10 cents per napkin. It's a, now, is this necessary for the construction, or do you just like to do this part? Uh, when I get the lactic acid in the fingers, I do it. Or if I see kids when I'm doing shows, when I see kids getting out of control, I'll do it then and kind of get the focus back on what I'm doing. So it's kind of a way of getting attention, for lack of a better way of saying it. When the money isn't coming in fast enough, or if I need to move product, time for hand tricks. When I'm doing competitions, as far as I got other competitors around me drawing, sketching. <laughs> Time for handshakes. <laughs> now, just one more question: Where did you get into, say, Fibonacci sequence and all that? Did you do you are you an avid reader? If you run into some crazy wild people, how did your theories come about? People. When I come into this table every day, I've met PhDs from all over the country. It's, I started doing flowers botanically correct, then I graduated into the Ikebana, how to take a dead flower and make it look better than it was alive. It's Japanese flower arranging. I only go to, I only use one style, the Sakai style. 
And then after that, I went into the Fibonacci because I found out that the numbers were more revealing. And now I'm more into the evolutionary psychology part of it all, why we go after what we go after. And that's where I came up with the hunting and the, ma and the, the mating and why we do what we do. It's, it's mostly because we're pre-wired to survive.